Samora Machel, born September 29, 1933, Chilumban, Mozambique died October 19, 1986, Buzini, South Africa, Mozambican politician, who was the first president of independent Mozambique, 1975-86. Born more than 200 miles north of Maputo, the capital of Mozambique, Machel received his education through mission schools. He refused to enter a seminary for higher education and instead became a nurse in Maputo. The experience radicalized him, and, after 10 years in the profession, he joined the clandestine Mozambique Liberation Front, for Limo, which sent him to Algeria for military training. He rose quickly through the leadership ranks and became for Limo's leader in 1970, after the 1969 assassination of Eduardo Mondlane. Machel claimed that his radical political stance came originally not from reading Marx but from the experiences of his family, his parents were forced to grow cotton for the Portuguese and were displaced from their land in the 1950s in favor of Portuguese settlers. After Mozambique became independent in 1975, Machel became president. For Limo followed Marxist ideology by nationalizing many institutions and supported Robert Mugabe in his fight to end white domination of his country, Zimbabwe. Machel, however, did sign the Nkomati Accord with South Africa in 1984, under which each country agreed not to support the other country's opposition movements, and thereby maintained an economic relationship with the white minority government battling the African National Congress. His charisma and personal style kept his government in power despite the droughts and floods of the early 1980s and the ongoing civil war with the Mozambique National Resistance, RENAMO. In 1986 Machel was returning to Mozambique from Zambia when his plane crashed in South Africa. It was believed by many that the South African government was somehow responsible for the crash, although it strongly denied a connection. Machel's widow, Graca, who married South African President Nelson Mandela in 1998, gave evidence to South Africa's Truth and Reconciliation Commission that supported the involvement of the minority South African government. A memorial to Machel was erected in 1999 at the site of the crash. Samora Moises Machel, September 29, 1933 to October 19, 1986, was a Mozambican military commander and political leader. A socialist in the tradition of Marxism, Leninism, he served as the first president of Mozambique from the country's independence in 1975. Machel died in office in 1986 when his presidential aircraft crashed near the Mozambican South African border. Machel was born in the village of Madrago, today's Chilumban, Gaza province, Mozambique, to a family of farmers. His grandfather had been an active collaborator of Gungunhana. Under Portuguese rule, his father, like most black Mozambicans, was classified by the demeaning term indigena, native. He was forced to accept lower prices for his crops than white farmers, compelled to grow labor-intensive cotton, which took time away from the food crops needed for his family, and forbidden to brand his mark on his cattle to prevent thievery. However, Machel's father was a successful farmer, he owned four plows and 400 head of cattle by 1940. Matchell grew up in this farming village and attended Mission Elementary School. In 1942, he was sent to school in the town of Zongweni in Gaza province. The school was run by Catholic missionaries who educated the children in Portuguese language and culture. Although having completed the fourth grade, Matchell never completed his secondary education. However, he had the prerequisite certificate to train as a nurse anywhere in Portugal at the time, since the nursing schools were not degree-conferring institutions. Machel started to study nursing in the capital city of Lourenco Marcus, today Maputo, beginning in 1954. In the 1950s, he saw some of the fertile lands around his farming community on the Limpopo River appropriated by the provincial government and worked by white settlers who developed a wide range of new infrastructure for the region. Like many other Mozambicans near the southern border of Mozambique, some of his relatives went to work in the South African mines where additional job opportunities were found. Shortly afterwards, one of his brothers was killed in a mining accident. 
Unable to complete formal training at the Miguel Bomarda Hospital in Laurenco Marcus, he got a job working as an aide in the same hospital and earned enough to continue his education at night school. He worked at the hospital until he left the country to join the Mozambican nationalist struggle in neighboring Tanzania. Machel was attracted to anti-colonial ideals and began his political activities in the Miguel Bomarda Hospital in Laurenco Marcus, where he protested against the fact that black nurses were paid less than whites doing the same job. Machel decided to leave Laurenco Marcus, Maputo, when a white anti-fascist, the pharmaceutical representative Joao Ferreira, warned him that he was being watched by the Portuguese political police, the PIDE. He slipped across the border, and made his way to join for limo in Dar es Salaam via Swaziland, South Africa and Botswana. In Botswana, he hitched a lift on a plane carrying recruits of the African National Congress of South Africa to Tanzania. Impressed by the young Mozambican, a senior ANC official J.B. Marx, according to Joe Slovo, bumped one of the ANC recruits off the flight to let Machel on. In Dar es Salaam, Machel volunteered for military service, and was one of the second group of Frelimo guerrillas sent for training in Algeria. Back in Tanzania, he was put in charge of Frelimo's own training camp, at Kanwe. After Frelimo launched the independence war, on September 25, 1964, Machel soon became a key commander, making his name in particular in the grueling conditions of the eastern area of the vast and sparsely populated province of Nisa. He rapidly rose up the ranks of the guerrilla army, the FPLM, and became the head of the army after the death of its first commander, Philippe Samuel Magaya, in October 1966. For Limo's founder and first president, Eduardo Mondlane, was assassinated by a parcel bomb on February 3, 1969. His deputy, Ravuria Simango, expected to take over, but instead the Frelimo Executive Committee appointed a presidential triumvirate, consisting of Simango, Machel, and veteran nationalist and poet Marcelino dos Santos. Simango soon broke ranks, and denounced the rest of the Frelimo leadership in the pamphlet Gloomy Situation in Frelimo. This led to Simango's expulsion from the Liberation Front, and the election, in 1970, of Machel as for limo president, with Dos Santos as deputy president. Like the late Mondlane, Machel identified himself with Marxism, Leninism, and under his leadership these positions became central to for limo, which evolved from a broad front into a more Marxist party. The new commander of the Portuguese army in Mozambique, Gen. Calza de Ariaga, boasted that he would eliminate for limo in a few months. He launched the largest offensive of Portugal's colonial wars, Operation Gordian Knot, in 1970, concentrating on what was regarded as the Frelimo heartland of Cabo Delgado in the far north. Calza de Ariaga boasted of destroying a large number of guerrilla bases, but since such a base was just a collection of huts, the military significance of such supposed victories was dubious. Machel reacted by shifting the focus of the war elsewhere, stepping up for limo operations in the western province of Tet. This was where a massive dam was being built at Kahora Bassa, on the Zambezi, to sell electricity to South Africa. Fearful that for limo would attack the dam site, the Portuguese set up three concentric rings of defense around Kahora Bassa. This denuded the rest of Tet province of troops, and in 1972 for limo crossed the Zambezi, striking further and further south. By 1973, Frelimo units were operating in Manica and Sofala province and began to hit the railway from Rhodesia to Beira, causing panic among the settler population of Beira, who accused the Portuguese army of not doing enough to defend white interests. The end came suddenly. On April 25, 1974, Portuguese officers, tired of fighting three unwinnable wars in Africa, overthrew the government in Lisbon. The coup was almost bloodless. Nobody came onto the streets to defend Prime Minister Marcelo Catano. Within 24 hours, the Armed Forces Movement, MFA, was in full control of Portugal. For Limo's immediate warning was that there was no such thing as democratic colonialism, 
and that nobody should imagine that Mozambicans would tolerate Portuguese rule just because there had been a change of government in Lisbon. For Limo's fears were well founded. The MFA allowed General Antonio de Spinola to become the first post coup president. He had been commander of the Portuguese forces in Guinea Bissau, then Portuguese Guinea, and was believed to be deeply implicated in the assassination of the Guinean nationalist leader, Amilcar Cabral. Spinola had no intention of letting Mozambique and Angola go. He dreamed of a Lusophone Commonwealth run from Lisbon, and wanted a referendum on independence. Matchell rejected such plans with the pithy remark, you don't ask a slave if he wants to be free, particularly when he is already in revolt, and much less if you happen to be a slave owner. Initial discussions between Frelimo and the new Portuguese government, held in Lusaka in June 1974, proved fruitless. It was clear to Matchell that the Portuguese foreign minister, Socialist Party leader Mario Soares, had no power to negotiate independence. So Matchell sent one of his top advisors, Aquino de Braganca, to Lisbon to find out who really held power in Portugal. His answer was that for Limo should really be talking to the MFA, particular to military intellectuals such as C.O.L. Ecobedo Melo Antunes, whose power was on the rise, as that of Spinola waned. Matchell refused to give the Portuguese the ceasefire they wanted. For as long as there was no commitment to Mozambican independence, the war would continue. For Limo reopened its front in Zambezia province, and stepped up operations throughout the war zone. There was little resistance. Following the collapse of the Catano government, rank-and-file Portuguese soldiers saw little point in continuing to fight, preferring to stay in their barracks. More serious talks between the Lisbon government and Verlimo ensued, and this time the MFA played a dominant role. The result was an agreement, signed in Lusaka on September 7, 1974, which agreed to transfer full power to Frelimo with the date for independence set for June 25, 1975. That day there was a short-lived settler revolt against the agreement, put down within a day by Portuguese and Frelimo troops acting jointly. A transitional government was set up, containing ministers appointed by both Frelimo and Portugal, but headed by Frelimo's Joaquim Chisano as prime minister. Machel continued to run Frelimo from Tanzania. He returned home triumphantly, in a journey from the Rovuma to the Maputo, the rivers marking the northern and southern boundaries of the country, in which he addressed rallies in every major population center in the country. The journey was interrupted at the beach resort of Tofo, in Inhambane province, for a meeting of the Frelimo Central Committee, which drew up Mozambique's first constitution. This gave the outline of the one-party, socialist state which Frelimo intended to establish. Frelimo was constitutionally the leading force in Mozambican society, and the president of Frelimo would automatically be president of Mozambique. On June 25, 1975, Matchell proclaimed the total and complete independence of Mozambique and its constitution into the People's Republic of Mozambique. This, he said, would be a state of people's democracy, in which, under the leadership of the Worker Peasant Alliance, all patriotic strata commit themselves to the destruction of the sequels of colonialism, and to annihilate the system of exploitation of man by man. Matchell's government moved quickly to bring key areas under state control. All land was nationalized, individuals and institutions could not hold land, but leased it from the state. On July 24, 1975, just a month after independence, all health and education institutions were nationalized. National health and education services were set up, and all private schools and clinics were abolished. The Catholic Church immediately lost the privileged position it had held in these areas. On February 3, 1976, the government nationalized all rented housing. Landlords What do we want landlords for in our country for, asked Matchell at the rally announcing the measure. Private ownership of houses was not banned. Anyone, Mozambican or foreign, could own a house for their own use, but building private property for rent was forbidden. This changed the face of Mozambican cities, 
black Mozambicans moved from the suburbs into blocks in the center of the cities, occupying houses and flats, once owned by Portuguese landlords, and many of which had now been abandoned. In February 1977, at its third Congress, Frelimo declared that it was now a Marxist, Leninist party, dedicated to the building of socialism, based on the Worker-Peasant Alliance. The Congress re-elected Machel as president of Frelimo, and thus automatically as president of the Republic. Frelimo was reorganized into cellulose, branches, throughout the county. The party was to be a Leninist vanguard, and state institutions, at whatever level, were to be subordinate to the party. In 1978 elections were held. Since this was a one-party state, there was no organized opposition. Instead, candidates were presented by for limo at meetings, and were sometimes rejected when people complained of offenses ranging from wife-beating and drunkenness to acting as an informer for the PIDE during the colonial government. For limo faced a hostile environment, with the white minority governments of Ian Smith's Rhodesia and apartheid South Africa on Mozambique's borders. In March 1976, Matchell's government implemented United Nations sanctions against the Smith government, and closed the borders with Rhodesia. In retaliation, Smith Central Intelligence Organization, CIO, recruited dissatisfied Mozambicans and former Portuguese settlers and helped set up an anti limo movement. Initially this Mozambique national resistance operated as an auxiliary branch of the Rhodesian armed forces. Frelimo dismissed them as armed bandits. As part of the measures accompanying the new Frelimo government, Machel introduced re-education centers in which petty criminals, political opponents and alleged antisocial elements such as prostitutes were imprisoned, often without trial. These were later described by foreign observers as infamous centers of torture and death. It is estimated that 30,000 inmates died in these camps. On October 19, 1986, Machel attended a summit in Bala, Zambia, called to put pressure on Zarine dictator Mobutu Sisi Siko, over his support for the Angolan opposition movement UNITA. The strategy of the front-line states was to move against Mobutu and Bunda in an attempt to end their support for UNITA and RENAMO, who they regarded as South African surrogates. Although the Zambian authorities invited Machel to stay in Bala overnight, he insisted on returning to Maputo. He had a meeting scheduled for the following morning at which he intended to reshuffle the leadership of the armed forces. Machel thus overrode the instruction from the security ministry that the president should not travel at night, with fatal consequences. The plane never reached Maputo. That night it crashed into a hillside at Mbuzini, just inside South Africa. Matchell and 33 others died. Nine people sitting at the back of the plane survived. Matchell's state funeral was held in Maputo on October 28, 1986. It was attended by numerous political leaders and other notable people from Africa and elsewhere, including Dr. Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, Dr. Kenneth Konda of Zambia, Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, King Mashushu II of Lesotho, Daniel Arap Moy of Kenya and Yasser Arafat of Palestinian State. Also present were the ANC leader Oliver Tambo, the U.S. President's daughter Maureen Reagan, the first Deputy Prime Minister of the Soviet Union Haidar Aliyev, and the civil rights leader, Jesse Jackson. Samora Machel was buried in a star-shaped crypt at Mozambican Heroes Square, a traffic junction in Maputo. Machel's second wife, Graka Simbine, joined for limo in 1973 after graduating in modern languages from Lisbon University. She worked as a teacher, first in for limo held areas in Cabo Delgado province, and then at the for limo school in Tanzania. She became Minister for Education and Culture in newly independent Mozambique. She and Machel were married three months after independence, in September 1975. In April 1976 a daughter, Josina, was born, and in December 1978 a son, Malangane. At Independence Matchell's five older children joined Josina Matchell's son Samito in the presidential household. In 1998, 12 years after Samora Matchell's death, Graca Matchell married Nelson Mandela, President of South Africa, 
thus becoming the only woman to have been first lady of two countries. A memorial at the Mbuzini crash site was inaugurated on January 19, 1999, by Nelson Mandela and his wife Graca, and by President Joaquim Chisano of Mozambique. Now the monument is made professional and the memorial service is held on October 19 each year. Designed by Mozambican architect Jose Forjas, at a cost to the South African government of 1.5 million rand, 300,000 US dollars, the monument comprises 35 steel tubes symbolizing the number of lives lost in the air crash. At least eight foreigners were killed there, including the four Soviet crew members, Machel's two Cuban doctors and the Zambian and Zarin ambassadors to Mozambique. There is a large street in downtown Dar es Salaam, the de facto capital of Tanzania, called Samora Avenue. One of the largest streets in Harare, the capital of Zimbabwe, was renamed Samora Machel Avenue, from Jameson Avenue, after independence in a gesture of gratitude for Machel's support for black liberation activities before majority rule. Also, a street in Moscow bears his name and the Zimbabwean band RUNN family had a hit song that mourned his loss. Thank you for watching this video.